So roughly five years ago, rooting your Android phone was a pretty common thing to do. Then over time, as each new version of Android was released, the software became more and more refined and slowly rooting your phone became less and less common. But for me, if it weren't for rooting my phone, I don't think I'd enjoy using Android phones nearly as much as I do. And so I thought it would be fun to put together a list of 10 reasons why I think rooting your phone can still be an incredibly useful thing to do. So let's get into it. So at the top, if I could only root my phone for one reason, it would be Quick Switch. This is an app that lets you replace your phone's stock launcher with any third-party supported launcher. Why is this a thing that you might wanna do? Well, since the release of Android Pie, when Google started making gestural navigation a thing, the gestures themselves were actually baked directly into the launcher, which is what allowed them to have those nice integrated animations. But it also meant that if you were using gestures and you wanted to use a third-party launcher at the same time, well, the experience became a little bit clunky. So using Quick Switch with a supported launcher like Launcher version two means that I can have my cake and eat it too. Now, one way in which Google's gestures are still somewhat lacking in comparison to say iOS's full screen gestures is that the little navigation bar still has this background that shows up behind it. It just looks a bit tacky and takes away from that immersiveness that we otherwise should experience when using full screen gestures. Well, using the Magisk module called Immersive Gestures, you can actually remove that black background. I honestly install this on any phone of mine that is rooted. And if you wanna remove the bar altogether, then try using a different module called Full Screen Gestures, though I have found this to be a little bit finicky whenever the keyboard is opened. Now, I've been pretty vocal on my channel about how I think Google software is king when it comes to Android phones, but it's not just about their OS. It's also about their system applications. Now you can of course download and install most of their system applications on the Play Store, no problem. But unless you have a Pixel or Nexus device, you generally can't install their phone and dialer application. Well, not to worry. If you install a Magisk module called Google Dialer Framework, this will actually let you install the phone application, whether it be via the Play Store or via a third party APK. Now this next one is for all you OnePlus users out there who, like me, wish OnePlus had already gotten their act together in implementing an always on display feature. Well, using an app called AOD Mod, you can enable this exact feature. Now to get this app to work, you first have to install the Riru core and then Riru Ed Exposed modules within Magisk. Then you need to install the Ed Exposed Manager application, all of which I'll leave links to below. You then need to enable the AOD module within the Ed Exposed Manager module settings. And once you've done all that, you'll finally be rewarded with an always on display that looks like this. There are even some handy settings you can tweak within the app to customize how it looks, although be aware that using this mod does have a fairly significant impact on battery life. Also, for those concerned about burn-in, the various elements of the OS on display do move around ever so slightly, so no need to worry there. While we're talking about activating modules within Ed Exposed, this next one is for all the Pixel 4 users out there. So using finger face, you can basically utilize face unlock in any app that already supports fingerprint authentication, which is downright amazing. This means that all of my banking and security apps that are still to be updated to natively support face unlock, well, now they do. All right, this next one is a pretty small tweak, again, for all you OnePlus users out there. But for those not aware, for some, baffling reason, OnePlus is still to implement a quick settings toggle to quickly turn on and off the dark thing. So using the aptly named OnePlus dark mode toggler, all you do is install the app and there you go. You can now find a toggle that you can add to your quick settings and now you can quickly switch the dark theme on and off. Okay, Icebox is an app that I featured in a recent episode of the top Android apps, but if you're someone who really values being able to use the stock home screen launcher, but you also really hate having to sift through all of that bloatware and those pre-installed applications and your launcher doesn't support the hiding of applications in the app drawer, so the Pixel launcher falls into this category, well, using Icebox will allow you to do so. All you do is select the app you want to hide in what the app calls an Icebox, which hides it or freezes it from your device. Keep in mind, this does mean that the app is no longer in operation. So you can't freeze an app that you still want to run in the background. But for hiding those annoying pre-installed applications without permanently deleting them, this app is very handy indeed. Now, if you're proper in a customization and you love tweaking your phone to make it look and feel just how you want it to, then there's probably no better tool than Substratum. There are so many theming applications for Substratum available on the Play Store, though not every one is for every device, so be careful and do some reading before installing the various themes. But again, if you're into customization, then look no further than Substratum. 
Now tweaking the look and feel of your phone is one thing, but there's really only so much you can do if the overall Android skin on the phone that you're using is one that you just don't like. So in that case, if you have a rooted device, then you can just load a custom ROM onto your phone. In some cases, this may just be a tweaked version of the software already running on your phone, but in other cases, it may be a completely different form of Android that radically improves the experience of using the phone. So for example, with my Xiaomi Mi 9T that I reviewed last year, whilst I didn't mind the stock MIUI software that came preloaded with the phone, I wanted something a little closer to stock Android and I wanted access to Android 10 earlier than what was available natively. And so I loaded a custom ROM onto the phone called Paranoid. More than anything, loading a custom ROM onto your phone is just a fun thing to do. And it's always worth giving a go at some point in your Android journey. Now, I've obviously already listed a bunch of specific applications and modules that you can use on your phone if it is rooted. But the final reason that you might wanna root your phone in 2020 is that there are just so many more applications available on the Play Store or otherwise that just have some great features that do not work if you can't grant them root access. A lot of apps these days do have some backdoor methods of enabling their functionality via ADB commands, but the amount of time that I've saved by simply granting root access directly within the app itself, let alone the amount of apps that I've tried that just straight up would not work if my phone wasn't rooted is pretty huge. And honestly, it's just super fun knowing that I can download and install pretty much any app that I so desire simply because my phone is rooted. And so there it is, 10 reasons why I think rooting your phone is still something worth considering in 20. If you're someone who has lots of experience in rooting devices, then hit us up in the comments below. Let everyone know why you love rooting your phone. But that is it for this video. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you later.